Hello, hello friends! Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with the unboxing of Simon Says Stamps October 2022 card kit. This is part of the monthly kit subscription and disclaimer as always, these kits are sent to me. I don't have to do the unboxing, etc. I just enjoy doing them. And yeah, let's dive right into it. So you get one of Simon's mesh bags with the kit, which is awesome because it will fit the entire kit. So it's a nice way to store it when, like if you like to keep the kits together, you can literally, even with the bag, like fit the whole thing in there and store them that way. And then with Simon's mesh bags, so many different colors available now. The newest one, of course, is black. I like the little paw pull for the zipper. And then there's also a little ribbon tab, which makes it nice if you want to hang them up. I haven't done that yet, but I do keep my kits and then I just have them like stacked like that. It's nice. So let's dive in to the actual kit. Alrighty. So we have the sunflowers and daisies card kit. Got our little sucker. Is this, ooh, it's banana. Ooh, fun. Okay, candy as always. <laughs> so at candy, there are tags and twine. So there's this pack that has 20, 20 tags. That's actually kind of cool. Um, and they're, they're a good thickness. Like these aren't thin tags. I like the, the size of these will be nice just even on cards, you know, just to use it as a little like focal point because that's generally how I use most of the time how I'll use tags. But if you like making tags for tags, you get that. You also get a pack of this twine too. So this is jute rope, much, much more thicker and substantial. It kind of just goes with the theme. So you get that. There is an embossing folder. I was really excited for this. This is the Fresh Daisies embossing folder. Love. I am loving all the embossing folders that have been coming out. I've been having so much fun creating with these. And yeah, Simon has come out with so many. There is separately, it doesn't come with kit, um, a coordinating little wafer die set that will die cut this large daisy and the smaller one so you can do we've shown that in other videos like you know die cut emboss and then like pop it up and you get like extra dimension so there is that love so there's that you get two full size ink pads so the perfection and citrine inks and a blending brush one of Simon's smaller blending brushes there's a couple of little mini slimline envelopes live and then cardstock I'll get the stamp set and the stencil later. So then we've got cardstock in pretty fall colors. Love. Love. And then last but certainly not least is the stamp set. So this is the Sunflower Fields stamp set. Love it. You got individual sunflower cluster and then of course the big one. Bunch of sentiments. I love the sentiments. Again it's that mix of fonts that I just love. Get well soon. Sending sunshine. Thank you for my friend thinking of you. Hello. Love. Love the mix of sentiments. Ugh. So there's that. And then there's also the stencil set, which all my stencils, I just cut the top off and then I save. I just keep my stencils stored in the packaging. So yeah, the stencil set coordinates with this large image, hence the ink pads and the blending brush, is you can use the stencils to color these in. So you've got the florals, there is a stencil, I've got them all backwards, there we go, for the centers, there's a stencil for the greenery, just like so. And then the final stencil for the rest of the green. So you can, you know, use other inks as well. Or you can, if you haven't used these inks before, you can layer up the inks to create like more colors. So if you're not into coloring, 
stencils are great. You can also use the stencils on their own, really, to create a more of a kind of a just no line look. So that's the kit in a nutshell. Like I said, there's also a, there's a die set for the embossing folder that's available separately. There is a die set also for the stamp set available separately. I will have links like I always do, like I'll link to the kit and then I'll link to everything individually and then just stay tuned to see what I make with it. I'm not even sure yet. So many things. I, really, I love this set. So just stay tuned and we'll see what I make with it. Alrighty, so I did go with the tags. I really like them. <laughs> so I'm using the tags and the individual sunflower image from the stamp set. So I lined one of the tags up inside my Misty. And then I'm going to line up this sunflower stamp. Once I've got it placed where I want, I'll close the door on my Misty. And then I'm going to stamp the image with Versafine Claire Fallen Leaves ink. It's a nice dark brown ink. And yeah, like I'd mentioned during the unboxing, these tags have a good weight to them. And I know I'm not adding a ton of water. So I thought I would do some very simple coloring using my Distress Watercolor pencils. I do have a video on how this palette came to be. It's just the pencil shavings. I did a video on it though. I will have a link to that video at the end of this video if you missed it. So I am just reactivating what's in the palette with my little water brush. You don't need to do the palette. You could just color directly with the watercolor pencils and do it that way. This is just what I am really preferring. It's easier this way. And yeah, it's what I like to do. So I'm picking up the colors I want to use with my little water brush. I've left the tag in my Misty because I know I'm going to restamp this image with the Distress Watercolor Pencils because it is a pigment. It, one, sits on top of the paper, which is a good thing. So these light colors are showing up on a dark cardstock like this craft tag. But it also means it's covering up some of the stamped image, which isn't the end of the world. With one like this, you could just leave it. It's, you know, it doesn't have to be restamped, but it restamped, but it does make a difference. So I just left it in place. And then after I was in coloring, I let it most like let, left it to dry and then re-inked the stamp, stamped it and got all that detail back. And then I just repeated the process because it was like, might as well make more than one. Heck, you could make 20 of them quite easily because there's 20 tags in that package. <laughs> but I did the exact same thing, stamped it again onto another tag, used my uh, Distress Watercolor pencils in their little palette here and picked up the color with my little water brush painted the petals. I use like the lighter yellow, which will be mustard seed. I'm pretty sure the other color is not fossilized amber, spice marmalade, I'm kind of assuming. Um, I haven't labeled the actual, um, my little swatches in my palette, but I'm pretty sure. I know for the center that was um, vintage photo was the center and yes, yeah, spice marmalade was added to the petals and then I used mode lawn for the greenery and then same thing I let this dry and you can see like it it lightens up a little bit but there's the detail compared to leaving it or restamping it so again it's just personal preference you don't have to so I restamped it because I just this image oh, really love this stamp so I'm gonna have to do more videos using this set y'all know me and big florals it's it's always a win so after these were dry, I'd re-stamp them. I used my antiseptic powder tool, moved the tag to the bottom corner so that I could use my antiseptic powder tool and stamp and heat emboss one of the sentiments from the set. I was still careful with pouring the embossing powder on because even though I used my antiseptic powder tool, um, that VersaFine Clear ink, because it had been stamped more than once, it takes longer to dry, It the embossing powder clings to it. I just used a brush to wipe off what was sticking to the image. Um before melting that with my heat tool. So I'd stamped the sentiment with white pigment ink, used Simon's Detail White Embossing Powder, and then melted that with my heat tool. Off camera, I just used my microfiber cloth to wipe off the excess anti-static powder on the tags. And then for my card bases, my card bases are going to be top folding A2 cards, so four and a quarter by five and a half, made from Simon's Smooth White cardstock. And I've now lined up the big uh, sunflower image from that stamp set onto my card front 
get my um, card base lined up in here because I had a feeling I'd probably need to restamp this more than once just because this is a very large stamp. And I'm going to ink up the stamp with Simon's Cappuccino ink. So just like a good medium brown. And I was right, I needed to restamp it. <laughs> so made sure it was lined up, restamped the spots that I missed inking up, etc. Got that stamped. And I'm going to do that to both of my card bases. And again, this is just one of those images where it's like you don't even need to color it in. You don't need to use the stencils. But again, I'm going to have to do more videos because it's I, ideas. Ideas are rolling. But anyway. I stuck my second card base, lined it up in the same spot, inked up the stamp with that cappuccino ink, stamped that onto my card front, and then I'll wipe the stamp off and I'm going to flip over my card so that I'll have the inside of the card and I'm going to position it higher because I don't want to cover the entire inside. Although again, when I stamp on the insides of my cards, whatever I add to the insides of my cards, I write over it. I, I, I've, I, cause I do get asked that a lot. Like, where do you write your message? Um, those sorts of things. I just, I write over it. I don't, it's not the end of the world. It's the inside of the card. It's just, I like to finish them cause it's habit after all these years. Plus I just, cards don't feel finished till there's something on the inside, but whatever's in there, I'm still going to write over it. So anyway, I flipped over the card base and moved it up. So I'm not stamping the entire inside of the card with this. And I'm inking up a stamp with latte ink, which is lighter than the cappuccino. So I'm still getting all the detail of the stamp, but just not as dark and intense and also gives, um, it won't be as distracting if I write over this with a ballpoint pen. So after I got those stamped, I'm going to line up another sentiment from that set. And once I'm happy with where I placed it, that I'm going to ink up with that fallen leaves ink so it stands out nicely so the outsides of the cards will say um, just thank you and then the inside I used the sending sunshine um, sentiment so got that stamped on the inside of the cards for my tags I took the um, twine that comes in the little tag package and I just threaded it through the tag and tied it in a bow a little bit a little bit fiddly that was I honestly that was about the most fiddly thing on these cards <laughs> Uh, but again, I've also tied like, cause people have asked that too, but you know, I've been making cards for 20 years now. And back in the day, this was all we had it was, you know, ribbon and, and, and twine and all those sorts of things. That was like the only embellishment we had back in the day. It sounds like the whole, you know, the story you tell your kids, you walked uphill both ways through a snowstorm with nothing but wonder bread bags on your heels. You know, that's all we had back in the day. <laughs> It was ribbon and twine. We didn't have all the bling and fancy things, but it's true. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> Put the twine through the tag, tied it in a bow. I popped the tags onto the cards with just thin uh, foam squares. So they're popped up just a little bit, but not too much dimension. As always, you could leave it here, but I'm going to add splatter because splatter is everything. And I just thought it would just set everything off real nice. So I put these in my splat box and I'm using my Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors palette with the gold. And mixed that up with some water, got out my fan brush and added just a healthy dose of splatter to both of these card fronts. Love how the splatter looks on the card base as well as on this tag. I'm, I'm like obsessed with these tags. It's kind of ridiculous. So yeah, they're awesome. So after the splatter dried, going to pair these with some green envelopes from my stash and that finishes off the cards so like I mentioned at the beginning of, of the video I will have a link to the kit everything individually etc that will be linked directly below the video as well as to my blog post in the blog post I have the pictures and picture links to everything so you can always check that out below if you're interested I'll have a link to the D distress watercolor palette um, watercolor pencil palette video <laughs> that'll be linked at the end as well and as always thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos thumbs up comment subscribe if you haven't and stay tuned because I'll be back very soon with another video bye <laughs>